All right, so let's get this party started. <clears throat> Today we're doing um, um, some stuff on uh, systems of equations. Actually, this is a really, really important lecture. This is the culmination of all the different methods that we've learned to solve systems of equations. We've learned by substitution, elimination, graphing, Kramer's rule. Um, and now we learn the most important one, probably. Um, this one's called row reduction or Gaussian, Gaussian elimination. It has many different names. Um, but uh, let me share with you the really, really crucial idea. It has to go by parts. First, first thing we got to do is we have to be able to distinguish easy systems versus these other ones that I'm going to call not so easy. Let me show you a picture of an easy system. super easy system of equations. More or less, they look like this. Uh, 2x plus um, y minus 3z is equal to 0. 2y minus z is equal to 1. Uh, 3z is equal to 3. This, my friends, is a super, super easy system. Let me point out exactly, exactly what makes it easy. This little pattern here is exactly what makes it easy. That below the first um, entry here, there are no more non-zero entries below it, and below the second one, there are no more. Everything below it is zero. That pattern is exactly exactly what makes it an easy system. It's so easy that we can solve it in two seconds. The bottom one is really easy to solve. You have uh, three z is equal to three. That tells you that z is equal to one. Check. You could take that z is equal to 1 and work your way backwards. This one would be would mean that 2 times y minus 1, that's your z, z is equal to 1, is equal to 1. That would tell you that 2y is equal to 2. That would tell you that y is also equal to 1. Check. And knowing y and z, you can easily go back up here and figure out um, that uh, x is also equal to 1. And that's what makes this type of system so, so easy, is this pattern that um, where you have no x's below the first one and no y's and so on and so forth. Sometimes they call this row redu row reduce, uh, a system that's row reduced or echelon row reduction. There are many names for it. Um, now, consider that and consider the next um, system. Now, compare the previous one, and this one that has this nice row reduced pattern, this little stair stair way going here, compare that with this one here. And uh, if you think about it for just a little bit, you realize they are totally, totally different types of systems. Piece of cake, really super, super easy, not so easy. Easy, not so easy. Easy, not so easy. Okay, now, what's the point of all this? point of all this is that what we want to do is we want to turn every single system that looks like this, even if they don't look so easy, we want to just tweak them just a little bit and turn them all into easy ones. And when we do, we call this, we say that we've reduced, row reduced the system. And the whole point of it is to make this solving of it easy. Then after you've row reduced it, solving it will take you about 10 seconds. That's the name of the game. It's called uh, solving the system by row reduction. Now, what we got to do now is lay down the rules, the ground rules. What sort of tweakings are allowed on this system so we can turn it into that system? We want, we, want to, we want to do two things. First of all, lay down the rules as to what sort of tweaking is allowed. And second of all, uh, we want to design more or less a strategy so that we can always do this. Um, let's go ahead and try to solve this one. And, and while we're solving it, I'll go. Uh, I'll keep uh, explaining the, what the ground rules are. And I think by doing this one, we, we'll, it'll shed a lot of light into the issue. Um, this one we're going to put away for a little bit. Uh, maybe we'll come back to it. We'll see. Actually, we already came back to it. That was really fast, huh? Uh, well, first, I came back to it because I want to point out the first part of the pattern. It is always useful to try to work on this number first, the very, very first entry. Get a number up there and to get zeros right below here. We want to get no more numbers right below it. 
And, and to do that, it, although this is a 2 in this case, this is called the leading coefficient, although it's a 2, it is often useful to have a 1 on that coefficient. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get a 1 on this spot, a 1x. Okay, now compare that with my system. I don't have a 1x, I have a 2x. But I, one, one thing that I could do is I could take my system and just tweak it just a little bit by switching these two rows. I can't imagine that switching them would change the answer or the solution to the system. All you're doing is really just writing the, this equation on that side and writing this one down here. This is called switching. And I made a special symbol for it, an S for switching. And I think I can even improve the symbol. I can say I'm switching rows 1 and 2. So I could say I'm switching row 1 and row 2. Something like that. <clears throat> and if I did that, what what would the new system look like? Well, I would have x minus 2y plus 2z is equal to 5. And I would have 2x minus 3y plus c is equal to 6. That's those two guys switched. And I would have negative 3x plus y minus z is equal to negative 5. Just like that. And already I have a 1 on this spot. Again, I know this is a 2 in here, but usually you do want to get a 1 in that spot. Okay, It's hard to see why, but you're going to have to trust me. Trust me on this one. Trust these hands, the power. All right. Um, let me see. What do we want to do next? Next, we want to follow this pattern. Um, right beneath this uh, leading entry, we want to have zeros here. I'm focusing right here. I don't want to see a 2x right there, and I don't want to see a 3x. These guys need to be killed, abolished, canceled, done with. Uh, so how could we possibly legally get rid of that 2x? The next step is incredibly, incredibly important. What we want to do is um, we, we want to kill that, and the way we're going to do it is we're going to use a method similar to to the method that we used before where we would add two equations, combine them to eliminate something. This is almost identical. Except in this case, we're not going to change that one or that one. We're only going to change this equation right here. And to this equation, I'm going to add a multiple of the top equation. I'm going to add, I'm going to add to it. I'm going to add to it. Um, I'm going to add to it negative 2 times row 1. Okay, and by the way, on the notes, I have special symbols for this, but here I'm writing it really big so you can read it. But to this equation, I'm going to add negative 2 times the first row. Think about it. If I add negative 2 times the first row, this will give you negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Added to that, that will kill that guy, and it's exactly what I want. I want to kill the 2x, and then in my next step, I want to kill the 3x. So let's go ahead and do that slowly. Um, the, the first equation is not going to change, so I'll write it over. x minus 2y plus 2c is equal to 5. The last one is not going to change. Minus 3x plus y minus z is equal to negative 5. This is the only one that's going to change, the middle one. And how is it going to change? I'm going to add 2 times the first equation added to that. So here we go. Oh, sorry, negative 2. Negative 2 times x. Use your calculator. No, you can't. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Added to that, it gives you 0x's. That's perfect. That's what I wanted. Negative 2 times negative 2y. That gives you positive 4y's. Added to negative 3y's, that gives you 1 positive y. Then you go to the 2. Negative 2 times 2z gives you negative 4z. Negative 4z is added to a positive 3z uh, will give you a negative 3z's. And then negative 2 times 5, that will give you negative 10. Negative 10 added to 6. Negative 10 added to 6. Uh, that will give you negative 4. Okay? And we accomplished something really, really important and beautiful. We killed this guy below the first entry. Now we need to kill the one down here. That would be the 3x. And so you have to think, how could we possibly legally kill this 3x. It's negative 3x. Well, we could add to it. We're going to add to it. Uh, see, that's why I needed a 1 in here. If this was like a 2 or something, it would be hard to kill the 3. I need to get fractions. But here, it's easy to kill it. All I do is add, add 3 times row 1. 
add 3 times row 1 to this entire equation and I guarantee you there will be no more x's there on my next step. You got that? Let's see. Let's see why they pay me. So nothing's going to happen to the other equations. I'll write them over again. I'll have x minus 2y plus 2z is equal to 5. I don't even have to write the 0x because that's gone. So I'll just write the y minus the 3z is equal to negative 4. Um, and then this is the only one that's going to change. That's why I wrote the other two equations and the last one I waited a little bit just so I can do it slowly. Uh, sometimes you guys may think that I do it slowly so that you guys can see what's going on. I do it slowly because I can't do it fast. <laughs> That's why. Alright, uh, 3 times x. That would be 3x. 3x added to negative 3x. How many x's does that give you? Zero x's. I told you. It's going to get killed. Alright, uh, 3 times negative 2y. That's negative 6y's. Negative 6y's added to a positive one. I think that gives you negative 5y's. And then 3 times 2z, that gives you 6c's. 6z's added to a negative 1c, that would give you a positive 5z's. And then 3 times 5 is 15. 15 added to a negative 5, I believe that's 10. Look how nice that is. This guy is gone. Very, very first part of the goal was to straighten out this column. Have it nicely in entry, one if possible, zeros beneath it. Check, we got zeros beneath it. The next thing you want to do is you want to start working on this column right here, or, or this second column, the Y column. And what you want is a leading entry, a nice leading entry. Two is okay, but one is better. Uh, you need a, If you have a one, it'll make it easier to kill things below it. With a two, you can, it's still okay, but it'll make it harder, it might make it harder to kill things below it. So I want a 1z widener done. That was so easy. Uh, after you get a nice entry here, a 1, you want to kill things below it. So look at the y. This one is killed, by the way. I won't even bother writing it in the next step. This 0x is gone. What I want to do is I want to kill that negative 5y. Now what I don't want to do, I don't want to mess around with the first row anymore because if I add things from the first row down here, It'll miss up all the work that I've already done. I'll, I'd be adding pieces here where I don't want anything here. I want zeros here. So basically, what, let me give you a secret here. Very important secret. Once you're done with the first column, you can ignore the first row. You're down to a 2x2 two two system. Well, something like that. You're down to a 2x2 two two system. Don't even, bot, don't even touch the first row anymore. You just focus on this. Um, now... The way we can get a zero on that spot is we could add to this row a multiple of the second row. We're going to add again on the on the homework on the cheat sheet on the homework. I have special symbols for this that you should follow. I'm just writing it in huge letters here so you can read. I'm going to add to this row. I'm going to add to this row to row three. We're going to add five times row two. Because I want to kill that negative 5. And if I multiply the, five, the y times 5 and add it to that, for sure it's going to kill the y. Okay? Let's see. Um, Alright, so first thing I like to do is I write, I like to re rewrite the other equations in the system because these ones are not going to change. These two are not going to change. This is the only one that's getting stuff added to. So I'll write these two because they're not going to change, and then I'll do this one slowly so that you guys can, so that you guys can keep up. Okay, uh, so I got negative, oh, no, 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 positive x minus 2y plus 2z is equal to 5. Uh, y minus 3z is equal to negative 4. All right, and here's where I slow down for you guys. Um, okay, let me think. Um, so we're doing row 2 times 5 and then add it into this. So there's nothing here to add, so forget about that. 5 times y, that gives you 5y added to negative 5y. That gives you 0, zero y's, which is perfect. That's exactly what was supposed to happen. We wanted to kill things below this. 
and um, and then you got negative three, and then you got to multiply by five. That gives you negative fifteen. Negative fifteen added to five. Negative fifteen z's added to five z. That that gives you negative ten z's. And then um, let me think. Uh, five times four. That times negative four. That's negative twenty. And negative twenty added to positive ten. That gives you negative ten. Okay, so beautiful. Look how it's panning out. Things are shaping up really nicely. There are no more y's underneath here. Really, what, I'm going to rewrite the system and clean it up a little bit. x minus uh, 2y plus 2z is equal to 5. y minus 3z is equal to negative 4. Uh, negative 10z is equal to negative 10. Look at that. This, my friends, this is why they pay me. Nice system. They've got this their thing going, the echelon form. Um, it is perfect. This one you can solve in a matter of seconds. Um, let me just point out one other thing. I can even make this cleaner. Remember I told you that sometimes we want a coefficient 1, even though they're 1 I originally started with added 2. 2 is okay. 1 is better. 2 leading coefficients are okay. 3 leading coefficients are okay. But 1 is better. So I'm going to get a 1 on this spot. Uh, now how could I possibly get a 1 instead of the 10 negative 10z? I want to have a 1. A leading, this is always the leading coefficient. Leading coefficient for x is 1. Leading coefficient for y is 1. I want the leading coefficient for z to be 1. Well, I, I'd have to multiply both sides by a negative 1 tenth. So I, I could do that. I could multiply. I'm going to write here m for multiply. I'm going to multiply that row, row 3, by uh, 1 over negative 10 both sides both sides of that equation and then we'll go we'll write it right here and this is turning out okay negative x no no I keep saying negative x whoops these hands were made for erasing all right uh, x minus 2y plus 2z is equal to 5 y minus 3z is equal to negative 4. Here we go. I'm going to do this slowly for you guys. Uh, you got the negative 10 here. I want to kill that negative 10 from both sides. So if I divide both sides by negative 10, think about it. Negative 10, negative 10, I will get that z is equal to 1. This, my friends, is beautiful. This is so, so uh, much easier than the original one we started off with. Look at the original one we started off with. And look at this one. This one is easy. This one is not so easy. This one you can solve. Like, look, I can solve in two seconds. Watch. Time me. Uh, 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 z is equal to 1. Uh, y is equal to negative 1. X is equal to 1. I told you. How many seconds is that? I'm good. So the point is that... Um, Every single system in the world, every single system, linear system, that is, like this, can be rho reduced. This is an ideal case where you have a um, consistent system, you have exactly one solution. Even in the ideal cases where you have dependent or inconsistent systems, the rho reduction will clean up a lot of the mess and just show you the answer so clearly when, when you have this rho reduction. This is really the most professional method. And it has deep implications in linear algebra as well. So, um, and it's easy to program into some computer or software or calculator. It's repeatable. It always works. Uh, this really is a nice one. Uh, there are a couple more things we got to clear up. Um, one is that these tweakings of the system have a very, very, very special name. They're called elementary row operations. Okay, these were the elementary uh, row operations and there are three of them and that and we've done all three of them here okay, let me point them out we've already done them we already learned them here's the very very first one switching the switching idea switching rows you know instead of putting the one on number two put it on number one spot switching and that's called an elementary row operation of the switching type Second type of elementary operation, adding. 
adding to any equation a multiple of another equation, that's an elementary row operation. It's another admissible tweaking of the system. And the third one is multiplying an entire row or an entire equation by a constant, non-zero constant. Those are the three elementary fundamental uh, elementary row operations. You're allowed to switch, you're allowed to add to any equation a multiple of another, and you're allowed to multiply both sides of an equation, any row, uh, by any non-zero constant that you want. Th those are the three elementary row operations. That's all your, those are the only things you're allowed to do to go from a normal system like this to a, a, a row reduced echelon one. Okay? That's one thing that we have to clear up. And then there's another thing that we have to clear up. The other thing to point out is that there really is a lot of redundancies in this, um, in this, uh, the way we did this problem. And the redundancy comes from writing x, x, x a bunch of times, x, x, x a bunch of times, x, 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 uh, y, 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 z, 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 y, 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 z, 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 y, y, y. It really is redundant, and there's no need for it. Um, you know, we try to make things nice. Uh, or there's no point in writing things a thousand times if there, if you don't need to. Um, so here's another important important idea. We could have let's start this let's start this guy all over again just for fun. Um, we could have instead of doing all this, taking the original system which is right there, and just copy down the coefficients. Like this, The x coefficients are 2, 1, and negative 3. And these coefficients are negative 3, negative 2, and 1. These are the y coefficients. And then the z coefficients, 1, 2, negative 1. And then the answer coefficients, the ones on the right-hand side, 6, 5, negative 5. And this is often called the augmented matrix. And it contains all the crucial information from the system. It contains, or really, the only crucial information are the coefficients. If you erase this one over here, I could recover just from this. I know that x's go on the, all these spots, y's go on the, all these spots, and z's go on all these spots, and then an equal sign, and then this, this one goes on the right-hand side. This contains all the crucial information that the system has. So there's no need to write x, y, z a million times, all you do is work it out on the matrix, on the augmented matrix, and so that we have this notion of row reducing matrices, which is really behind the scenes, behind the scenes is really a row or a simplifying the system. But, you know, most books or people, they'll just talk about simplifying the matrix, but really that's what you're doing. Um, right? This is one of the major places where originally originated come from. All right, so let's play that game again. Uh, we'll just do it for fun. First, we want to do is, first thing we want to do is get a one on that spot. You don't really have to do that, and you can do it with a two, but you can have fractions all over the place. So sometimes it's just better to have one to try to avoid the fractions if, if you got, if you can, or if you want to, or you don't have to. It's a free country; you're allowed to do whatever you want. But um, I'm going to go ahead and get a one on that spot just for fun. Um, let me see, I need some more energy. Hold on. Okay, so we get a, we're going to get a one on that spot. Um, and then once, once we get a one on that spot, we want to get zeros right below it. So to get a one on that spot, I do this switching. Remember, we got three types of raw operations, switching, adding, and multiplying. So I, if I switch those, I would get this matrix. I would get a 1, a negative 2, a 2, and a 5. Then I would switch it 2, negative 3, 1, 6. Whoa. This one's running out. Uh, then I get a negative 3 here. 1, negative 1, negative 5. From there to there, I did, um, all I did is a switch. Is that clear? It may not be clear. I'll do 1, negative 2, 2, 5, 6, 1, negative 3, 2. So that does something important for me. It gets me a 1 on this spot. The next thing we want is zeros beneath it. 
So to this row right here, I'm going to add, to that row we're going to add, I use A for add, we're going to add negative 2 times row 1, and we're going to add that to row 2. That will give you this matrix, and again, think about which, which um, row is getting added stuff on, the second one. That means you leave the other ones alone. Leave the other ones alone. This is the only one we're changing, so I'm going to leave the other ones alone, and I'll say this one for last, and I'll do it carefully for you guys. Ne 1, negative 2, 2, 5. On the bottom, I have negative 3, 1, negative 1, negative 5. All right, I'm going to do this one carefully. This one is going to involve negative 2 times 1. That's negative 2 added to that. That gives you 0. Negative 2 times that gives you 4. Uh, that's positive 4. Add it to negative 3, hmm. that gives you 1. Uh, negative 4 added to that gives you negative 3. Negative 10 added to that gives you negative 4. Okay, that was good. Then, um, then I want to get a 0 on this spot right here. Always, it's about the first column first. First column, and then you, well, I'll get, I'll tell you more later. All right. Let's take it easy here. Uh, all right, I would need a zero on this spot. How can I legally get a zero on this spot? I can add. I can add to this. I, get, I want to add three times row one. Again, I want to emphasize. That's why I like having a one under. Because if this was like a seven, how can I kill the negative three with a seven? I would have to multiply by three over seven and add it to that. That means the entire row would have to be multiplied by three over seven and add it to this. It would be ugly or pretty, depending on whether or not you like fractions, I suppose. Anyways, and the one on there is really nice. Um, so I'll add uh, 3 times 1 is 3. Oh, yeah, I forgot to do this. Um, I want to emphasize that I'm not changing the other rows. I'm only adding stuff to the third row, so I'll leave the other ones alone. 1, negative 2, 2, 5... 0, 1, negative 3, negative 4. All right, here we go. This is the one i got to add stuff to. So 3 times that is 3. Added to that gives you 0. 3 times that gives you negative 6. Added to 1 gives you negative 5. 3 times 2 uh, gives you 6. Added to that gives you 5. 3 times 5. 15 added to negative 5 gives you 10. By the way, this should match with what was happening. You should always keep in mind what's going on underneath. This guy right here matches exactly what was happening at this step of the process. You see that? That's matching exactly what's happening on this part of the process. This is really, really going behind now. It's going on behind the scenes. Um, get it behind the scenes. Whatever. Okay. Um, so next. Okay, that's the. F you're done with the first column. Whenever you're done with the first column, you forget about this. You really don't no longer have a three by three system. For all practical purposes, you got a two by two system now. This is your. This is what you worry about now. This little square here. First thing we want is a leading one. That was easy. It's there already. Next thing we want is zeros beneath it. So we want to kill this five. This negative five. To kill that five, I'm going to add stuff to it. I'm going to add to it five times row two. Again, you don't want to mess around with row one because you'll mess up these zeros over here. You got to forget about row one, column one. Forget about them. They're gone. Oh, yes. I could, you could even do this. Oh, forget it. Okay, uh, so that gives you... Let me think. Again, I want to emphasize, I'm not changing the other rows. I'm only changing the third row, so I'll write them over. 1, negative 2, 2, 5, 0, 1, negative 3, negative 4. This is the only one I'm changing. 0, 5 times that is 5. Added to that gives you 0. 5 times that is negative 15. Added to 5 is negative 10. 5 times that is negative 4. 20 added to 10 gives you negative uh, 10. And then 
finally we want I want to get a leading one there so here I'm going to multiply by 1 over negative 10 on on both the entire row and that will give me uh, the following 1 negative 2 2 5 0 1 negative 3 negative 4 0, 0, all right, this divided by negative 10 gives you 1, that divided by negative 10 gives you 1, and that's beautiful, that's exactly what we call this row reduction of a matrix, um, and then you can, from this you can recover your system, you know that this was the X column, this was the Y column, this was the Z column, and this was the right hand side column, so I can recover by saying this was X minus 2Y plus 2Z is equal to 5, y minus 3z is equal to negative 4, uh, z is equal to 1, and this should match what was happening behind the scenes here, this part right here, exactly. Oh, well, I should point out that there's not just one way to do it. Uh, you, there are some small variations that could occur, um, but um, at the end, your solution, everybody should get the same solution. Uh, in this case, though, I did exactly the same steps and I did them the same behind the scenes so that you could see how they pair up. Um, and now this system is really, really easy. We already solved it before. And um, this, my friends, is row reduction of matrices. Boy, I can't believe it. I think that might be all I got for you guys tonight. Can you believe it? I think you can now do the, uh, the homework. And that's a wrap. Peace.